Today I'm going to talk to you all about the vaccination debate. So the vaccination debate is something that people have been having for many, many years. Um, people have been arguing about whether or not vaccinations are safe, whether or not they actually do prevent you from spreading illnesses or diseases. But right now, especially because of what's going on in the world with the pandemic and with COVID-19, um, people are talking about whether or not they think it's safe to take the new COVID vaccination that is coming out. So I'm going to give you a little bit more information about this debate what, um, and talk to you about what people think on both sides of the debate. And at the end, I'm going to tell you how I feel about this. Vaccination debate. So for this presentation, I want to share with you that um, most of the information that I'm going to give you is from this website called procon.org. And this is what this website looks like. It's, um, it's a great website that gives um, lots of um, great information about the pro and the con arguments. So I highly recommend coming back to this website and looking at any other um, information you might want to find out about any other debates. Okay, so the question that we're going to be looking at here is, should any vaccine be required for children? But at the end, we're going to talk more also about some current information about vaccines um, and what's happening with the debate about the COVID-19 vaccine. So. I'm going to go back and forth between the pros and the cons, and at the end, I will give you my um, opinion about this debate. So, first of all, we have the first pro, which is vaccines save lives. According to Shot at Life, um, which is a United Nations partner organization, vaccinations save 2.5 million children's lives every year. So, I think this is a pretty powerful. Uh, piece of evidence to support the vaccination movement. The people who are against vaccines um, on the con side say that there is a small potential harm um, for vaccinations. According to the CDC, one child out of a million has a fatal allergic reaction called anaphylaxis. So even though it's a really small um, chance that a child could get this allergic reaction. Um, for a parent, right, it's still a chance, even if there's just one child out of a million. In addition, the CDC also says that one child out of two, um, out of 20,000 can get something called intussusception, which is a kind of bowel blockage, which requires hospitalization. So, this is something that um, parents are obviously also very concerned about. And there are some other side effects of vaccinations, um, but the effects are pretty small. On the pro side, um, the people who believe and fight for vaccinations say that the ingredients in vaccines are safe. So some of the ingredients in vaccines um, are seen as harmful in large doses. Um, so some of the chemicals that are used in vaccines do potentially have very harmful effects if they're in large doses. However, the amount that's in vaccines is so small that there is no damage done. Um, people who are against vaccines say that the government should not control their medical choices. They believe that everyone should have the freedom to choose what goes in their bodies and that the government is tracking citizens with biological toxins. So people who are in this area of thinking um, are worried that the government is actually tracking their citizens by giving them <laughs> vaccinations. On the pro side, um, these people believe that medical organizations 
have proven that the vaccines are safe because they've been working on them for so long. These are just some of the medical organizations that have um, fallen into this group of people who have proven that vaccines are safe over time. The FDA, which is the Federal Drug Administration, IOM, the Institute of Medicine, AMA, American Medical Association, and AAP, American Academy of Pediatrics. These are just four um, out of many uh, medical organizations. On the con side, um, people who don't believe in vaccines say that their religious freedom is hindered if they're forced to take a vaccination. So if we're just talking about the United States now, um, in the US Constitution, there is actually a part of the Constitution that says that no law can inhibit free practice of religion. And in addition, we have several religions in the United States that don't allow vaccinations. Um, not just the United States, but religions around the world. Um, so this is really interesting because um, this becomes a problem for public schools. So if someone wants to put their child in a public school, but they don't believe in um, vaccinations, then they have to sign an agreement to tell the school that they're not vaccinate, vaccinating their child for religious reasons. So it's been a big controversy in the United States. Um, people who are for vaccines say that they protect the whole society. So in order for vaccines to be effective, we need the whole community to protect each other from spreading diseases. Um, there need to be a large number of people to get the vaccines in order for them to work, right? So we have to work together to protect each other and to make them effective. Um, there's a large uh, natural immunity um, consensus um, amongst communities that believe that natural immunity is preferred. So um, some people believe that um, getting the infection naturally causes the body to build stronger immune, to build a stronger immune system. So I think that a lot of um, American parents, you know, want their kids to build their immunity naturally, um, which I agree with. Like, I think that um, if we're just talking about germs, right? Like, so for example, they're just playing outside, they're getting dirty, they're build, building their immune system so that their body can fight off um, just general colds and coughs, you know, runny nose, cough, that kind of stuff. Um, this has to do with germs. But when we're talking about actual viruses, um, this is very different. Um, if we're talking about diseases, right, like measles, mumps, rubella, those kind of infections are not um, something that I agree with that a child should just get naturally because um, obviously they could die from it. On the pro side, um, vaccines protect children of the future. So a vaccinated a mother actually can protect her unborn child. So for example, um, there was a rubella outbreak that killed 11,000 babies. And the babies that were born um, from mothers who were infected by rubella um, actually gave birth defects to 20,000 um, of babies. So at the same time, the vaccinated mothers um, decreased passing on the disease to the babies and also decrease the birth defects. So it's really interesting how, you know, we're not just talking about the born children, right? We're talking about the children who aren't born yet, who can be protected from um, their mother being vaccinated. So let's talk about the current situation for um, what's happening in the news about vaccines and how it, vaccines are being used as a political tactic. So there are many right-wing conservatives who have created false conspiracy theories um, that say that the COVID vaccine trials have been killing people and that microchips um, have been implanted in people's bodies. So both of these things are false. Um, people have not been dying from the COVID vaccine trials and also microchips are not being implanted in people's bodies. Um, in addition, Trump has used false claims saying that 
vaccines cause autism. And he started saying this um, when he began his campaign in 2007. And he has continued to spread, spread distrust of government control. So these are um, two things that we've seen from right wing conservatives, right? So these are mostly people in the Republican Party who um, support Donald Trump or who have supported him. There is an anti-vaxxer movement that has a strong social media presence. Anti-vaxxer means um, someone who is against vaccinations. So during the measles outbreak in 2019, um, or there were several outbreaks actually, um, the anti-vaccination vaccination pages grew more links than did pro-vaccination ones on Facebook. So this is um, according to nature.com. So um, if you want to read more about this, you can go to their website. This is the article here, um, which was published in May 2020. So anti-vaccination, uh, sorry, anti-vaccine movement could undermine efforts to end coronavirus pandemic, researchers warn. So it's really interesting um, kind of learning about, you know, what's going on here with social media and how it's going to possibly have an effect on the coronavirus vaccine. So speaking about COVID-19, coronavirus, um, there is a misinformation concern out there. Um, Well-connected Facebook groups are spreading fears about COVID vaccines. So Facebook is trying to stop the misinformation according to NBC, um, but it's very difficult to do. So this is their website here um, that was published recently. Um, and they're just talking about how um, there's a lot of spread of misinformation on Facebook about vaccinations, and they're trying really hard to stop it, but it's very difficult to stop because it spreads so quickly. And these are the sources that I used. As I mentioned, um, procon.org. Um, there's another website here, McGill. Um, .ca. This is um, from Canada. So there's also some information here about the anti-vaccination movement and how, um, you know, there's a lot of information here that's very confusing. Um, for example, the popular depiction of anti-vaxxers as earthy crunchy doesn't tell the whole story. So um, this means earthy crunchy here means like someone who is a hippie, someone who, um, you know, just wants to live naturally. Um, but there is also anti-vaccine sentiment strongly associated with conspiracy thinking and protection of individual freedoms, right? And this is usually um, related to far-right groups. So it's very interesting how these two groups of people have somehow come connected here with the anti-vaccine movement um, in 2020. So I recommend reading that article. Okay, so I told you that I would tell you my opinion. And I personally really believe in science, and I really think that it's essential for all people in a society to get vaccinated so that we can prevent diseases from spreading. Um, there is a lot of evidence out there that has proven that vaccines are safe and effective and that they do save lives. So I think that the risks are very low um, and the benefits are very high. Um, I also think that uh, in this current situation with the pandemic and with COVID-19, I, I really feel hopeful that if enough people get vaccinated, that we can stop this pandemic from spreading and we can save lives and we can go back to normal because that's what we all really want to do, right? So anyway, that's my opinion. And uh, let me know if you have any questions or comments and don't forget to like and share. Thanks. Bye.